Hey everybody, today I'm going to tell you a story about my personal standoff with troops during Jade Helm 15 in September of the year 2015. Now, if some of you don't know what I'm talking about, let me just read the Wikipedia definition of what is Jade Helm 15. I'll give you a minute to look it up. Just look on Wikipedia, type in Jade Helm 15, J-A-D-E-H-E-L-M 15. Most of you, if you're watching me, you know what that was. Um, let's see. The exercise details. The joint exercise in realistic military training known as Jade Helm 15 was sponsored by the United States Special Operations Command, or SOCOM, and involved the United States Army Special Operations Command and Joint Special Operations Command with other U.S. military units in multiple states including Texas, Arizona, Florida, Louisiana, Mississippi, New Mexico, and Utah. Its stated purpose was to improve the Special Operations Forces' capability as part of the national security strategy. It was coordinated and led from Elgin Air Force Base, an Air Force Material Command base in Northwest Florida. Approximately 1,200 troops were engaged over the course of the exercise. They were mainly Army Green Berets, but also a small group of Navy SEALs, Air Force Special Operations Troops, as well as conventional Army Infantry. Although the initial request to state officials from the U.S. Uh, command listed elements of the United States Marine Corps Forces Special Operations Command, Marine Expeditionary Units in the 82nd Airborne Division, and interagency partners as participants, troops engaging in the exercise assumed the roles of either occupying or resistance forces. Most locations were in sparsely populated, uh, get out of the pop ups, were sparsely populated in regions near small towns. Some participants wore civilian attire and drove civilian vehicles. Maps of the exercises included areas of the United States, such as Colorado and California, where no actual operations were planned. The cities in Texas include Bastrop, Smithville, Big Spring, Caddo Lake, Caldwell, Cristobal, College Station, Dell City, El Dorado, Goliad Junction. Leaky Menard, Mountain Home, San Angelo, San Antonio, and Victoria. I can tell you they were here in Clear Lake City. Okay, the command claimed that the size and scope of Jade Helm sets this one apart from previous training exercises, such as the Derna Bridge or Robin Sage. In Bastrop, 60 soldiers took part, including the presence of two Humvee vehicles and a water buffalo water tank. Private land offered by the residents would be used for the exercise though he noted that they would not be paid for the land or receive a tax break of any kind. La Storia also claimed that $150,000 of revenue would be brought to the area because of food, fuel, and shopping. Journalists were not allowed to embed in the operation, but the Texas State Guard and the civilian group Counter Jade Helm monitored the exercise. Now, I remember during that uh, the governor was worried and the command officers had to appear in Austin and tell the governor that this was not a takeover of the Republic of Texas. And so the Texas State Guard was put on heightened alert as counter Jade Helm. All right, so let me tell you what happened to me. This exercise ran from June through September, right? I was in my home living in a, in a condominium. If you've seen some of my previous videos, the neighborhoods I walked through, uh, you see there's condos and duplexes, and it's a nice area. It's built up in a nice way. But it's right next to the Johnson Space Center, and we're on the edge of Houston in an area that's called Clear Lake City, and it's near the water. I'm about two miles, a mile and a half from the water, and about a half a mile from the entrance to NASA. So one night, I get up in the middle of the night, and I was making a, a snack, and I was in my kitchen, and right next to the, the bar top on my kitchen counter... Where I'm eating, I can see out the patio window across my fence, and there's the street. And the street is the same one that has the entrance to NASA. It's called Saturn, if you look on a map. Saturn Lane. So I'm looking out into the night, and I see this truck creep by, going about 8 miles an hour, just creeping along. And it's a camouflaged military troop carrier. And in the back are all of these soldiers, and they're dressed in riot gear with their masks down. They're, they're fully armed in combat gear, and they're ready to roll. Like Look like they're about to storm a building, you know? And I just dropped my foot on, oh, my God. And they, they passed by, and they were all looking at me. 
hanging on to the bars inside the covered personnel carrier, and they're looking at me with their guns, and they saw me. I guess I was one of the only people at night that had my kitchen, my living room light on, and my patio shades drawn open, and was looking right at them. I mean, I made eye contact with the dudes, special force dudes in the back of the truck. I went, oh my God, and I kept going. And I ran, this is a crazy part. I ran outside of my, to the front door, outside of my unit, ran around the building to Saturn Lane and ran around the corner of the bushes. And when I got there, the truck had stopped about, 60, 75 yards down the street, maybe 80 yards. It wasn't even a full football field away. It wasn't even 100 yards. And they had stopped in the Esplanade in the middle of the street at this intersection. And they were all staring at me as I came running around the building. Um, I was met with a whole troop carrier full of special force dudes in riot gear with their guns and their masks down, just looking at me. And it was just like both of us. I mean, them, there was probably... 10 to 12 guys in there, in the back of the truck. And it was a, a, a face-off. It was like, they're thinking, what's this guy going to do next? And I'm thinking, well, first I thought, better clean my pants. No, <laughs> almost. I just thought, oh my God, they stopped. And they're looking at me and I thought, what do I do now? You know, and I just kind of, I backed up and I walked back around slowly and I went back in the house. And when I got in the house, I was freaking out. I'm like, oh my God, they're going to come and storm the, what are they really up to? You know, we didn't know what they were doing. They could have been arresting people. They could have been taking people to detention centers that uh, they thought were unworthy or for whatever reason. And, and I'm thinking, why are they looking through my window? It was like 2.45 in the morning. And I'm just, I'm pacing around my little, no, now what do I do? And I thought, I should just take off and run. <laughs> and I thought, no, I better not. And I was literally just going to run out my front door and run off around building and through the neighborhood and just get lost like in a maze. And I thought, no, I better not do that. They could have the building surrounded or, you know, I didn't, I didn't know what to think. And now this was in September. This was like the last week of the Jade Helm operation. So what would you think if you're up at night and now this truck, it was a truck. It had no lights on it, but the, the headlights that were on the front. They weren't like regular headlights. They were, they look like uh, the eyes of a fly, of a house fly, and they had this amber glow to them. And it was a special light. It it lit up the area around the truck, and but it didn't reflect or uh, shine light. It was odd, and that and it was this just a flatbed truck with a camouflage cam canvas over the back, and that's who was looking at me. So anyway, that freaked me out. And in fact, that was September. Um, I had already been, you know, a person who had researched, let's say, rabbit hole topics and shared things. And I didn't have a YouTube channel yet, but I, I had said things on Facebook and I thought, they'd been watching me and they're going to come get me. And I started getting really paranoid. You know, this never happened to me before in my life. And you see it on TV at the time and you think, wow, they're doing an exercise. But when you see them actually staring in your living room at you face to face, making eye contact, that just freaked me out. And uh, so anyway, I ended up leaving the country. I, that's when I took off uh, in the end of 2015. After that, in the fourth quarter around December time, I took off and I went to Chile. I went to Santiago and began busking and singing just to get out of the country and just get away from my place and get away from people. <laughs> I stayed down there for six or eight months. I actually made a very good living singing in the streets in uh, Bella Vista, in, which is a nice town in Santiago where all of the restaurants and places are, where all the tourists go. And it's summertime down there because if you go down between December and March, say from uh, the end of November till, till March or April, that's summertime for them. And tourists are there from all over the world. So I had a good time. And then when I was in Chile, that's when I started my YouTube channel. My first videos I put up were just uh, phone iPhone videos of me playing the guitar, singing in the street. And I would only could only record like 20 seconds at a time in little snippets and put them on a site that, so that I could tell my friends and family where to look so that they could see what I was doing. And that's why I started my channel. But now it's evolved into what I do now where I'm, I'm a storyteller now. I've got so many stories. 
Uh, I think you saw yesterday my, my video about the five gold coins and how I actually held them in my hand and was shown five gold coins by my CEO of the vaccine company I worked for. And I was just thinking, you know, I've been thinking for months, you know, what do I do to change the focus of my channel and, and be more interesting? And I thought, and I read somewhere in the YouTube guide uh, on how to make videos that people like to hear stories and I've got stories, you know, because I've traveled the world and been to about 60 countries and on business. And I've seen all kinds of things and have all kinds of stories like this. This is only the, the tip of the iceberg. And, and I enjoy telling stories. And I've, I've, I've told so many stories to people that uh, they've said, you should write a book. But why write a book when I can make videos, right? So I hope you enjoyed that. That's my story of my face-off with Special Forces troops right outside my property at my curb during Jade Helm 15 in September of 2015. All right. Thanks. And I'll catch you next time. Bye.